Joining me here on the TRS podcast line is Justin from the band Dirty Honey. Justin, what's going on, brother? How are you? How you doing, man? Thanks for having me on. Dude, it's my pleasure, man. Uh, it's uh, I bet this is a really exciting time for you guys, man. And I appreciate you cutting some time out. I know you guys got a bunch of sold-out shows coming up here uh, this weekend or the back end of the year, and I want to talk about that in a moment. But uh, what is it? What has this been like for you for you guys as a band? You, know, you guys have been a band, what, maybe two years total, right? Yeah. Um, what's yeah, it like? To, effect, yeah. What's it like to go from you know a pretty young band at two years to you know playing you know festivals? You guys were at Exit One Eleven. Um, I think you guys did you know Sonic Temple in May and some other festivals here and there, and obviously all these sold out shows and stuff. What's it been like to go from you know you know band just playing locally to you know touring across the country playing all these crazy big festivals and sold out shows, man? I mean, it's it's been a dream come true, man. It's what we all always wanted to do, so getting the opportunity to actually do it, I mean, we could be more grateful for all the people that have helped get us there. Yeah, um, but, I mean, I'm not going to lie, it's exhausting. Um, <laughs> I slept 15 hours last night. I got my first good night's sleep in like three months. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. After, that, I, I'm, glad you got your, I'm glad you got your sleep in. I think it's always important for people to get an ample amount of sleep before they have to interview with me. So th- I'm glad that you were able to get that in. You know, it's it's been tough. Like we're we're t- we've been touring pretty extensively for the past eight months, um, mostly as an opening band. So we've been like you know playing for a lot of these big artists, but they're all like in buses and we're in vans. So we're kind of chasing them. They're sleeping on their buses, you know, and driving through the night, and we're driving three or four hours after a gig and staying yeah. in a crappy hotel, and then driving another couple hours in the morning to catch up with them. So that that definitely is exhausting. But I mean, we we wouldn't change it at all because it's just been such a great ride and it's obviously working. (laughs) Yeah. I I think a lot of people fail to realize sometimes, you know, you get your load in, your load out and your opening band, you're kind of, you know, kind of fending for yourself out there on the road in, in, you know, in in a, in a small vehicle. But obviously with the director, you guys are are heading into, have you already started eyeing uh, some, some new travel arrangements for the next tour for 2020? Uh, we're talking about it. We definitely are hopeful, but we're not going to get ahead of ourselves. Right. Um, it's going to be another tour in January or February that we'll be announcing shortly. And I think we'll probably still be in a sprinter van for that. Um, and then we're going to go to Australia um, in March and start working on our next record. Um, nice. And actually play some festivals over there, I believe. And um, then we'll see what happens when we get back from that. Hopefully by then we'll um, get in the bus. That's what I'd like to do. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Man. Now, does, does the uh, does the Dirty Honey Sp- Sprinter van have a name? Do you guys have a name for it? No. I mean, we rent a new one um, for every tour because we usually fly to the first city that the tour starts in and rent one from there. Ah, gotcha. Okay, all right, right on. Just curious, you know, if you had a, a long-standing name or something there for for, for the van. But um, now you you mentioned we, we should we should. I'll work on that for you. Yeah, but you, know, you come back. You have to come back when you know when you guys have a new album or EP you know, in springtime or summer or whenever <laughs> that time comes, and we'll have a we'll have a name or something to, to go with. Uh, yeah, the, the touring there. But uh, as a band, now you guys uh, formed kind of in, in a. And kind of, I don't know. I guess all bands form in a strange way in some way or another um, in the LA music scene, but. Um, I guess uh, your guys' singer was actually in a cover band, and you know John and those guys had set in, and, you know, and he kind of was like, "Oh man, this guy's a really good guitar player," and they kind of formed that way. What was your um, introduction into you know forming the band and, and co- kind of completing the four piece? Um, well, I was actually I met John separately from Mark, and we were writing music together with a drummer for about a year, and we had like. It was it was a different style of music, but uh, I mean it was rock and roll, but it was uh, not the same exact uh, I'd say style or brand that we were doing. But we were um, we were looking for a singer, and um, he was also working with Mark, and um, he brought me and the drummer and um, started working with Mark. He was a different drummer at the time, and things didn't end up working out with that drummer. And um, but I became part of the band. I had a different name at the time. And we were, again, we were still just mostly doing covers and then kind of writing on the side. Um, and I knew Corey, uh, we, we were all, John, me and Corey, we were all like session musicians and, and would do side men work around town. So I met Corey on a gig and he came, I called him up to sub 
because the drummer for a cover gig that we were using um, failed. And I also sent him a couple of like the original tunes that we'd written, and Corey learned them and crushed them and stood up from his drum set after the gig and was like, I want to be part of this band. And we were like, oh, my God, that's what we've been waiting for. <clears throat> um, and once Corey was in, it kind of just kind of just took off pretty much almost immediately after that. We went to the studio like a couple months later and recorded, started recording our first real demos at uh, NRG Studios in L.A. That's um, the version of Fireway that's actually still up on Spotify. We did at that with another handful of songs. Um, yeah, that's kind of how I came into the fold. Very cool. Well, I appreciate you sharing a little background there um, as far as the band's concerned. Now, you didn't always start off as a bass player, right? You originally started playing guitar and then kind of let it go and then discovered bass, right? No, bass was my first instrument. Oh, okay. Right. Um, but I picked up guitar like six months after that. And But I played bass in my high school jazz band. And then I went to college for classical guitar. And I studied classical guitar for four years doing that. Wow, very cool. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that, that's pretty interesting stuff, man. I appreciate, again, share, sharing a little background there as far as, you know, your musical uh, taste. Now, you mentioned, you know, the, the band before had a different style. Uh, what kind of translated you guys into the style you have now, which is, you know, a lot of people will say, you know, throwback 80s glam rock or whatever label, I guess, you know, people want to put on it. But um, what... What kind of transcended you guys to, uh, you know, developing this? I just call it pure rock and roll. I mean, there's really no bones about it. It's, you know, it's, you know, big time licks, big guitar riffs, solos. You know, the vocals and lyrics are, are, are right in line with, uh, you know, rock and roll music. What, what kind of led you guys to that particular sound? I mean, that's, well, um, we were always writing that too. Like as soon as I started writing with Mark, it, it always kind of came out that way also. Um, and that's what we all grew up on. That's what we all wanted to play. I think there was just like a certain point where like that just wasn't popular. And um, like the stuff I was writing with John and the other drummer, I, I would say that was more like kind of Muse influence. Mm, okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this, we all grew up on this style of music, and we we're all like a huge proponent of the blues. Like, I love the blues. I love blues guitar playing and all that stuff. So. It's all the stuff that actually came out, and we'd kind of been writing. It's almost like the band was two, like as far as writing, we were writing two separate styles, and um, we recorded a demo of "When I'm Gone," and that's actually what got the attention of our manager, Mark Zadia, and he kind of helped push us in the directions of, of writing more that style of music, um, which we were more than happy to do because right. that's what we actually wanted to do. We just didn't think it would work, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I, but now. That's now yeah. we have to get to do what we want to do and what comes naturally, so it's awesome. Yeah, and that's really all you can ask for, I think, in a band, especially in the music industry, is to write and record and tour on music that you actually legit enjoy playing. Um, and I know a lot of people, you know, you know, have always you know compare you guys to like Motley Crue and that type of style and stuff. But for me, like listening, you know, to the EP, I, I feel like you and you mentioned the southern the southern kind of feel to it, and I feel like you. you Black Crows is a little bit of is an influence for you guys in, in some way. Not that you guys sound like Black Crows, but there's there's a hint of of that Southern Black Crows kind of style. Was that obviously I don't think it was deliberate, but it was that a band that you guys kind of looked up to and and you know really enjoyed. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, I uh, that's one of Mark's favorite bands, um, and we we all, we all like the Black Crows. Um, funny that we get like the Molly Crew comparison because none of us really listen to that. We I mean we all love like. Guns N' Roses and Aerosmith and Zeppelin. And none of us actually were very into like the so called hair metal. Um, so we all find it kind of funny that like we get comparisons to like Slaughter and like some other bands. We're like, we never even listened to those bands, but right. that's cool. You know? and, and, and we've learned to take it with like a grain of salt because, you know, maybe we don't even like some of the bands we get compared to. But we realize now when a fan says that, it's just because they love that band and they love us. Right. So that's all they're saying. So. You know, anytime somebody compares to somebody, we usually are very grateful because it means they like us, I think. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's always kind of a weird thing where, like, comparing, like, oh, you have this sound. But uh, I, I think when I first heard you guys on the radio, I was in Columbus, Ohio. I was doing some traveling for work. And uh, when I'm gone, right. I came on the radio. It was the first time I heard you guys. And I went, holy shit, who is this band? And um, I was like, I got to get them on the podcast. And here we are. And, again, I appreciate the time. Um, talk to me about, about that song in particular and how it kind of just – exploded for you, you know, in, I guess about six months ago. Yeah, uh, well, like I said, that was the one that got our manager's attention. 
and he heard a demo of that and he was like that's a rock hit um and we were like yeah sure whatever dude right. um, <laughs> um but you know we gotta give a lot of thanks to him and, and the whole team that he's put together for us um our radio guys and our booking agent at uta like it's it hasn't just been i know it seems like an overnight thing but we've put a lot of work into it it's been very strategic like a lot of our touring has been uh, based around like hitting certain radio markets to make sure we're being on the radio and you know playing all these festivals we've gotten to do like a lot of radio interviews that helped us get exposure but it's i mean it's honestly been crazy i never thought that song would go number one especially like since we don't have a record label um push it as hard for us it's 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 honestly crazy i don't even know how to put it into words to be honest no, I, I, no I, I can imagine it, it's been a whirlwind in the last six months for you guys, and, and kudos. And I'm glad you mentioned it because, like, I think a lot of people see the, oh, you know, the big radio hit, and they don't see the, you know, the year and change before that led up to all that. You know what I mean? The, to, to getting to where you are now, mm-hmm. and all the years prior to that, before even forming a band of of practicing in your room, and you know, you know, you know, all the timeless work that goes into it, and the money spent for you know recording and all that stuff. So, so kudos to you guys. Um, and you know, for, you know, break, breaking the ceiling a little bit there. And you have the new single out now, Rolling Sevens. The video is fantastic. I encourage everyone, obviously, to check that out. We'll have a link for it as well on the, the site at revelatorshow.com. But um, you mentioned, obviously, you know, doing interviews and press and stuff all the time. And that's something you kind of got to get used to doing. Um, is that, do you guys enjoy doing, you know, it seems like you guys are, are pretty seasoned at this point. You guys enjoy doing, you know, the, the press circuit and, you know, the radio circuit. You kind of get used to doing those all the time. Oh, yeah. We have a blast doing that. Super. I mean, I like doing interviews. I like talking about the band and promoting the band and hearing when people have funny questions or have like done a lot of research. I'm like, oh my god, how did you even find that out? You know, it's, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool, man. Um, now the band name, uh, I guess originally, I guess Mark had talked about you know the band name came from an interview with Robert Plant on Howard Stern. Is that true? Yeah, um, Robert Plant. Yeah, Robert Plant had a band called uh, the Honey Drippers. And Mark thought that was really dirty, so he put together Dirty and Honey. Um, and we've been going, I mean, we went through a lot of band names. Um, and we were very unhappy with the one that we had um, when Corey joined the group. I always hated it just from the very beginning, but it just kind of stuck for a minute. Um, but we had a list going. We knew we wanted to change it. We had like 100 um, song names, you know, in our phones. And one night after a gig in Santa Monica, we were all like, because we had just um, done the recording at NRG, where Fireway was recording. We were like, well, we need to change the name if we're really going to, like, spend a little money and try and get people to know it because we don't want to be known as this name. Um, and that one was the only one where we all were like, where nobody made fun of it or nobody hated it. You know? <laughs> right. We were like, oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Now, I always ask bands um, you know, about the the band name, and I'm always curious about, you know, you mentioned you had a list. Do you recall any of the names on that list that were just absolutely putrid? We've had a bunch of them on here. We've had, like, Loose Balloon. We had one that was, like, the Napkin of Appreciation. We've had a bunch of really, really, like, uh, band reject names. So do you recall any of that are on that list? Uh, you know, I don't recall any. I mean, there were some bad ones, some bad, bad. I'm actually looking at my phone to see if I still have the list, but I don't see it. Unfortunately, I must have deleted it. Um, no, but we were called, uh, when I first joined the band, it was called Ground Zero. Um, mm. And then we, then we did a gig on 9-11, and we're like, oh, my God, we can't even say our name. <laughs> right, you know? yeah, yeah. You, get, you didn't um, get booed off stage or anything, right? Like... <laughs> no, yeah, we, we didn't even say it. We were just like, yeah, thanks for coming. We are, uh, and here's the next song. <laughs> right, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> and then we were called the Shags, um, which I hated. And there was actually a band from the '60s called the Shags, um, and a terrible all-female group that's actually, I think, known as one of the worst bands of all time. Oh, nice. And we had like a video too of, you know, up as the Shags. But whenever you type the, the Shags into YouTube, it, like that would come up. So we were like, that's got to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Well, yeah, the, the Dirty Honey is, is a great name. The logo is killer as well. Um, yeah, I mean, oh, so lucky. yeah, like when we had a guy in New York, uh, a company called Rockwell, um, do it. And when we saw that, we were all like, that's our logo. That's amazing. That's iconic. Yeah. Like, there was no fighting at all. That was just an overall resounding yes. Oh, yeah, man. 
Yeah, very, very cool stuff, man. Now, you mentioned, um, obviously, you guys are working on some shows. I don't know how much you could talk about right now um, as far as shows in January into the new year and working on new material, but um, are you guys on Shiprock this year? Not that I know of, but okay, they keep right. adding stuff all the time. So who knows? I just show up where they tell me to. Well, um, I, I I feel like you guys would, would fit in there, and they always add bands to the last second. I have a feeling you guys are probably going to be getting that call to be on Shiprock uh, at the end of January. Hopefully so. I, you know, I, I've been on that cruise. And, and, uh, where, where, where does Shiprock go? Uh, Shiprock this year is in uh, – it, it comes out of New Orleans, I believe. It takes uh, – is. I think it's based in New Orleans this year. Does it go to the Caribbean? I, I believe so. I think it does. Oh, man. I took a cruise to the Caribbean like two years ago, and I, I'm a weed smoker. I live in California. Just always have. I was raised with it. And I took um, my vape with me, and I, I thought I, I, I just like left it in my bag, and I totally got busted at customs coming because we left out of Puerto Rico, and I thought I was going to Puerto Rican jail for a while. Oh, man. But they, they left like I got a fine, but I, now, now I'm like skeptical about cruises. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, if you can't take the THC vape, that is definitely a big downside. I'm also an advocate um, for marijuana <laughs> legalization as well, and that's always like I'm like, can I take my vape or can I take some flour with me? No, okay, I might not want to well, go. I, but... I, I, I fly with my vape all the time, and I've I've had dog smell, and it's never been a thing. But the dog smelled it actually. Wow. At the, so it totally blew my whole conception that they don't smell it because it turns out they do. Really? Yeah. It must be they have some you know superior uh, sniffing dogs south of the border possibly. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so just we... warning you for strip breath next time. Don't bring, <laughs> right. Our, <laughs> right. don't bring your vape or at least get rid of it before you come back into the U.S. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, that's. I, I always think that you know, usually you pass it off like, oh no, it's just a, uh, you know, it, it's just a, uh, you know, tobacco vape. But I guess they, you know, they're trying to cancel those out now as well. So it's kind of scary. Like, yeah, you know, they they busted like six of us. They were, it wasn't just me. There were like a lot of us, like that all had them. And it was not even part of my group. It's like there, there was just a room full of random people I hadn't even met on the ship that were all like in the same situation. Wow, man. Well, I'm glad you were able to, you know, to, to not spend any time in in jail for, for something as, as trivial as that. And uh, we're oh, yeah. just just pay the fine and move along there. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, just to clear, it just that's just another – put that on the list of all the things that sh- – of why it should just be legalized uh, across, you know, especially the United States. Canada done, has done it. Um, I, I don't know what the – Oh, yeah, uh, it's the great. Like, is, there's all these – I'm, I'm, putting a, I'm putting it on a rider now for the states that are legal. Right. Right. Well, Illinois and Michigan um, in 2020 will be on the uh, recreational list uh, coming in the first of the year. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, um, and I think um, Ohio has it for uh, medical. Um, Tennessee, uh, which is, I'm based here in Nashville. Um, I'm not sure. Tennessee seems to be far behind um, on a lot of that stuff. So hopefully, you know, as you know, election time comes and all that stuff, we, we were able to get some people in there who are advocates for uh, for making it, you know, legal for medical and, and recreational as well. But, um, I mean, I, I hate to cut you. I, I think our time is about up here, man. Is there anything you want to say for me? Uh, no, just thanks for having me uh, on the show. Uh, I really appreciate it, man. Awesome, it's man. It's been fun. I'm glad we got to talk about weed a little bit. <laughs> yeah, no, it's nice to always talk about things outside of music, whether it be weed or sports or anything. Now, you're, you're in the uh, the LA, LA scene. Are, are you an LA uh, sports fan at all? You know, Lakers or, um, you know, Rams or anything uh, like that? Or? I- I'm a I'm a Dodgers fan, and actually, uh, we actually played at the very first Chargers game here in LA, um, nice. out in the beer garden. So oh, hopefully cool. one day we'll get to play inside that arena and be like, yeah, I remember two years ago we were out playing in the beer garden. <laughs> right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, yeah, man. Now what? Now um, I'm gonna let you run here. I swear, I always do this. I'm always like, oh, I'll let you run, and then I come up with some other things. But um, as far as live no, shows, keep going, man. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> as far as live shows are concerned, um, what are some of the crazy things you guys have seen at some of these crazy festivals and stuff, man? I mean, I imagine you know, you're getting there and you're you're looking out at a sea of you know thirty, forty, fifty thousand people at some of these festivals. What are some crazy things you've seen in the crowd, man? I can't imagine some of the things you see from stage. Um, like a surfing panda or a crowd surfing panda. That was pretty cool. <laughs> nice. All right, um, nice. We played exit one eleven, and there was this guy smoking a blunt in the front row, and he handed it to my singer, and he handed it to me, and I got to smoke it on stage, and the crowd went wild when that happened. That was nice. pretty awesome. Oh yeah. Very um, cool. 
yeah, I mean, the crazy thing for me has been, like, backstage and, like, Tom Morello was, like, had, like, the room next to us and I got to say hi to him. You know, like, in, like, to meet a couple, like, even though they're, like, I, I come up and I fanboy and I'm, like, oh, okay. But it's still cool to, like, you know, be in the same company as those kind of people. Yeah, I, I'm with you, man. Like, uh, I hear, being here in Nashville, I do concert photography on the side, and I freelance at some venues here in town, and it's always weird. Like, you know, I run into, like, Lizzie Hale or, like, Chuck Garrett uh, from Alice Cooper, you know, and, like, just, just mm-hmm. you know, these random people you run across, and I'm all like, oh, sh- that, oh, that's Lizzie Hale. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and it's like, I'm like, oh, how's it, you know, I, don't know, I never know what to say or how to act or anything, you know? Like, I'm just like, wow, how cool, you know? Yeah. Like, it's just one of those things you're like, oh, my God, that's that's amazing. Yeah, we got to hang with Lizzie actually after uh, Exit 111. She was super cool. She was like, "We yeah, should man. do a tour together," and we, like, we would love to. Yeah, dude. It, well, I mean, so it, anytime huh? she, anytime she says that, you know, I, like I said, I've been fortunate to, to run in here a couple times. We have some mutual friends, and it's funny, like you will be at like some small local local bar playing some local bands. We have some mutual friends, and she'll be sitting at the bar hanging yeah. out. And, you know, it's just this little rundown bar having a drink. You know, taking in the local scene. She's really, really all about it. So when she says, "Hey, we want to take you on tour," like that does happen. Like I, I've, I don't know how many times that there's. You know, the Dead Deads, there's a couple other bands where I'm like, she's like, oh, yeah, we're taking them on the tour. And then, you know, six months, a year later, they're like, like, oh, man, you guys really are on tour with it, with Hailstorm. She's not screwing around. That was that was real. So I wouldn't be surprised if you yeah, hear so. something in the next year or so. And you guys are doing some opening slots for them. Well, that would be awesome because they're cool. And we, we actually um, knew her brother also, uh, RJ. Just before any of this happened, he just, like, came out and he saw me actually playing – a random like R&B gig and was like you're fucking awesome and we exchanged numbers and we went out drinking a couple times and that's like that's cool that we're doing like festivals with them and everything yeah man I mean, yeah that's gotta be a pretty surreal moments I'm sure man to you know be like oh my god we're, we're on the same stage as you know Hailstorm or on any other bands you might look up to as well man but um, well, Justin, man, I'll let you go here, man. I don't want to maximize too much of your time here. But again, thanks for the time. You know, feel free to come back when you guys have new stuff recorded or whatever. You know, as I know, twenty twenty is going to be a massive year for you guys. Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, you know, hearing more music, more videos, and you know, you guys playing a ton of killer shows. And hopefully, you guys will be uh, uh, have a Nashville date at some point as well. I think there might be one in store for you. Fantastic, man. Uh, we'll close I can't, out. I can't say anything official yet, but uh, right, right, yeah. we'll be seeing you soon. Awesome. Fantas- <laughs> well, fantastic. I look forward to it. Maybe we can catch up then when you guys come through Music City. Um, we'll close out with a new single I alluded to earlier, and that is Rolling Sevens, which is the latest single for you guys, which I'm sure is also going to get a big, huge run on FM radio. Uh, we'll close out with that. Anything you want to say about the song before I let you run? Uh, it's our favorite song. I think it really encompasses what we are as a band. We love dirty, gritty groovy sexy rock and roll and this song is that so i hope you guys enjoy hell yeah it is dirty honey rolling sevens here on revelator